welcome back to Say Mojo Homestead. It's the weekend, so it's time for highs and lows. <laughs> I love how you're always like. <laughs> we are getting ready to get a new church. Like our church bought a building and they are moving in next Sunday, actually. So this week I was out there working on landscaping and stuff like that. So that was just a lot of fun, being able to just contribute that part of me to the church. So I had a lot of fun doing that. My other high was that we had some friends come over Friday night and it was just really fun hanging out with them. We ended up hanging out pretty late, which we don't really do a lot. Mm -hmm. We're kind of old <laughs> when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. But that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun hanging out with them. My low was finding out that my truck is going to be another week in the shop. The guy got sick and was out for about a week, so it delayed everything by a week. So that's definitely my low. I need that truck back. Um, the truck I have on loan, I only get it for one more week. Uh, so that means now I've got a week where I've got to figure out transportation. But I'm sure that that will come. Not stressing too much about that. My high is that um, sometimes, you know, it's hard to juggle all the house stuff and the homesteading stuff. So I had kind of a new idea for um, just some regular deep cleaning around the house. And I kind of tried it this week. And I'm going to try it like full force next week because I kind of got the idea midweek. So I'm really excited to implement that, continue implementing that and see how it goes. Um, because often some of that stuff kind of just gets pushed to the weekend, just ends up being a lot on the weekend. So I'm excited about that. Um, my low- I am too. I'm sure you are. <laughs> my low was that we ordered a love seat six months ago and we got it this past week, except for it wasn't a love seat. Nope. It was a sofa. It's a print. So a sofa with print was a little more than what we wanted for our living room. And also the size was more than we, what we wanted. <laughs> yeah. We ordered a love seat because that's what we wanted. <laughs> and so now it's going to be another eight months until we get our love seat. A little frustrating, but you know what? It's one of those things you can't really do anything about it. So you just go with the flow. Yep. You know, uh, they are letting us keep the couch on loan. It's a little bit big, but at least it gives us something because we had already gotten rid of our other one. Yeah. So we've been like minimalist for about time. six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with two chairs yeah. in our main family room. So yeah. yeah. So. But uh, today we are going to be talking about overwintering peppers. Now this is becoming more and more of kind of a popular hot topic thing in the garden. Uh, we did it last year and had a huge success with it. So yeah. we want to bring you guys along, show you how we do it and encourage you to do it because it's really, really easy. I'm going to dedicate this video to my parents because I was just talking on the phone with them today and they were asking me about it. And I said, hey, ironically enough, we're doing a video on that. So... <laughs> Papa Jim and Khaki, this is for you. <laughs> All right, so Cass had to go to a meeting and won't be back until later today. Peppers are by far my favorite thing in the garden. So I'm a little bit sad that we are at the end of pepper season. We did get a ton this year, so we will be able to continue to enjoy them in their preserved states. I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and then I will show you guys how we cut them back in preparation for overwintering these guys. So right now, I'm gonna go through and harvest everything that's on these plants and then we will get started on cutting them back and I'll show you how we do that. So stay tuned. So Joe, what is your favorite pepper in our garden? Um, um, Purple sparkle. The purple sparkle. Why do you like the purple sparkle pepper? Because it's purple. Because it's purple. <laughs> Sayla, what's your favorites? Munchbox pepper and bell peppers. Ooh, why do you like this? Um, I just like their flavor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're sweet. So I can see why. We actually grew, they're called, here, I'll show you. They're called lipstick red lunchbox peppers. 
Um, so those are a lot of fun. They do, I have found, take a long time to ripen and get red. And we didn't really start getting a heavy crop on them until like right now. So um, there have been some coming in intermittently through the summer that they were able to enjoy. But uh, they were definitely loaded today when we were picking them. No. My favorite are the habanadas and the lunchbox, pe lunchbox peppers. Why do you like those? Because they both uh, taste good. Because they both taste good? Yeah. <laughs> what do you like about the taste of them? This one's not spicy and this one's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> not spicy and sweet. So yeah, that's good. That's good. So my favorites would definitely, I think the habanadas. That was, this is the first year we grew those and I was really impressed with them. So it's a habanero pepper without the heat. So you get like all the flavor and none of the heat. I have eaten several of them just by themselves as a snack. And then my other ones are the purple sparkle because I just like the color of them. They're really fun to have kind of add in with salads uh, to get that vibrant purple uh, color in there. And they also taste really good. They're just like a sweet bell pepper. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to show you the biggest benefit of overwintering peppers. A lot of times you don't really get a real good harvest coming in until towards the end of the summer. Um, when you overwinter them, you're starting from that point. And so the beginning of the summer, you're getting really big, mature size peppers like that you would find in the grocery store. This is the other reason. We like pimentos, really like them with pimento cheese, stuff like that. But they, the two times we've ever grown them, they took forever to produce and we really didn't get much off of them at all. And this was one year where we grew them. These are the first peppers we've gotten all year. We started these guys from seed. We did not buy the plants, but they haven't even ripened. These are supposed to be red. And we've got two on this plant and I think I picked two already and that was it out of four plants. So we averaged one per plant. So we're gonna overwinter these. So that way next year, the pimento should start to form on them at the beginning of the summer. The plants already matured, the plant itself, and it will have to put out a lot of new growth, obviously. But by doing that, we should be able to get a lot more mature pimentos to use and not have to wait all season long before any of them start producing. So while we're out here, I wanted to show you guys something on jalapenos that I often get asked and see come up a lot in discussion boards and stuff. And that is corking. So what exactly is corking? Some consider it a blemish on jalapenos. It's literally like when the skin cracks. It's those little kind of scar lines that appear on there. In other parts of the world where jalapenos are really valued for their um, flavor, pepper, uses in recipes, stuff like that, this is actually a desirable trait. Um, this is something that is looked for because it's considered high quality. And these things will actually sell for more than a smooth skin jalapeno. It's a sign that when that happens, that the skin is a little bit thicker, which on hot peppers is a good thing and typically means you're getting a little bit more heat in that pepper. All hot peppers can do this. Jalapenos are the most famous for doing it. So it's not a bad thing if your jalapenos are doing that. Be glad about it. It's a good thing. What causes it is when they get an abundance of water or like rain after a dry period and it causes a rapid growth um, in the fruit and it cracks the skin and then it scars over. But again, corking, good thing with jalapenos. It is time to start cutting them back. And I'm gonna show you how to do it and what to look for and where to cut it and all of that stuff. So we're gonna get all of these cut back and then we'll probably wait until tomorrow before we dig them up, plant them and get them into their holding area for the winter. You really want to cut ideally above the Y. So above the split, most pepper plants will have, you know, split off like that. I will take you to one that may be an exception where that split is a little bit too high. But ideally, you your pepper plants have split fairly close to the ground, not that far up. This one's probably about four inches off the ground. And then you wanna look for the little growth nodes. So what those are, are these little bumps that come out of the stem. Sometimes there may be growth already starting on them. Sometimes it may just be a bump. 
You look for those because that's where new growth is going to come out. Ideally, you wanna keep about two after the Y on each side, so two little bumps after the Y, and you wanna look for ones that are going to be growing out, not in to the plant. So really, this one isn't ideal, but uh, it actually looks like we may have a fair amount of growth nodes down on this knob. So I will probably not worry about trying to keep this one and just go ahead and cut it off. The other benefit of doing this is that you get a really good base, a big good stalk that's gonna be really sturdy for next year. Now ours put off a lot of growth. So like this one had a really good sturdy base but as you can see, it still fell over. So next year, I'm thinking we're probably still gonna have to stake them. I was hoping that we'd eliminate that this year. Anyway, let's get started with the easy one over here. So here's a growth node. There's another one on the other side that you can't see that's going off. So I'm just going to snip right there. You do wanna leave a little bit of space above it. It's gonna harden off up here. And if you cut it too close to this, gro this uh, new growth node down here, it could harden off down to there and eliminate any chance of that actually pushing out growth. So you wanna give a little bit of space there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one completely off, get that out of the way. And then, like I said, I'm gonna cut just below this one that's growing back towards the plant because we do have a lot of growth here. And there you go. You end up with a very stubby, sad looking pepper plant but i promise you you are not hurting it by doing this you're only going to promote that much more growth next year sometimes you get lucky and you have a good kind of try branching in there with these i definitely as long as there's good symmetry on them i try to keep all three of those as opposed to just going with a y some people would disagree with me on that but that's just that much more growth and it's going to help with uh better symmetry in the new growth for next year the next day and it's a beautiful day it's much warmer than it was yesterday so we're gonna go ahead and dig up all these pepper plants Jeremy went through and cut them so trimmed them so we're gonna dig them up and we're gonna put them in um, nursery pots we're just recycling these one and two gallon nursery pots and we'll fill them with just your very basic potting soil we don't really want to encourage a lot of growth right now so it's just a very basic potting soil but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, just a couple things to note. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to get all of the roots and that's okay. You just wanna make sure you go ahead and get those roots covered quickly. You wanna pot them quickly. You also want to make sure you water them well over the next couple of days. So I'm gonna show you Kids are playing in the background, sorry. I'm gonna show you how we went ahead and potted these. Now I'm going to put a little bit of, of this potting soil in the bottom just so I make sure it is a good flat surface. And then I just put it down in there. And then I'm just taking my soil and, and making sure it's staying upright. And then patting it down pretty compact, not too compact, but just enough so that the plant stays up. I'm only filling it up about halfway or halfway up the pot and that's it. So we got all of our pepper plants repotted and they are ready to be moved to their winter location. Now what we do during the winter is we have an area behind our cold frames that we basically set up a large rectangle of um, straw bales yeah. and we put the pepper plants in the, the potted plants into the middle of the square bales and then we cover them with plastic or windows. This year we were gifted with some windows so that's what we're going to put over them today. I'm really excited about these windows because they actually slide really easily so we'll be able to vent them on hotter days when we need to let some of that hot air escape. Yeah, so they're storm windows. Yeah. And so rather than having to crack them or take them off, yeah, like you said, we can just slide them open. So it'll yeah. make it a lot easier. Yes, I'm really excited about this. So we really encourage you guys to give this a try. It is super easy, even if you only try it with like one or two pepper plants. Um, last year we did it, we were just, I don't know, 
I wouldn't say skeptical, but I wasn't positive it was gonna work and it worked great. Yeah. And like I said, like I cannot stress enough, it increased our yields so yeah. much this year. So mm -hmm. it is definitely worth the trouble. If you've done this before, leave a comment, let us know. Um, if you like this material with gardening and stuff like that, give it a thumbs up yeah. and feel free to share it with your friends or anybody else for that matter. Um, anyway, hope you guys have a great week and be blessed.